Hey guys, it is Chad here from the Electric Academy. Uh, sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. I decided to try to add a logo to the screen and then it like covered the whole entire screen. So you can see my face, which depending on how you feel about me could be a good or a bad thing. A couple housekeeping things to get out of the way. I sent out an email to you guys letting you know that there was a Facebook Live show going on today. And um, with that, I also have an ebook that I put out there and people are having a lot of problems with the links. So if you are having issues with the link when you go there to buy that little ebook, I've had like five people tell me that they've had issues with it. Let me know, please, because uh, I want you guys to get that. And it's really frustrating if you can't. So there's that. Uh, other things, my family comes home tomorrow, so that's good. I've been alone all week. I'd like to say that I was lonely, but actually I was quite busy. So it worked out good that they were gone because I had a lot of stuff on the go. I uh, teach a class for entrepreneurship in trades, and this week we talked about marketing, and we had a marketing specialist come in, and it was unbelievable and mind-blowing, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, if you guys ever need any kind of marketing, or if you're looking at get, starting up a trades-based business, hit me up. I can hook you up. I definitely uh, love teaching that part of the course. I love, well, not that part of the course. I love teaching entrepreneurship for trades, so if it doesn't matter where you're at, just let me know, and I can definitely help you out. Uh, today... I want to talk about troubleshooting tips. Now, I had that Facebook poll go out. I know some of you guys got on there. I will be following up this. I'm definitely going to be doing another Facebook Live on grounding and bonding probably next week. I think that is really important because it is very often, like, they're so similar but not. So it's definitely worth me having a discussion. So what I'm going to do is actually put together a little PowerPoint on that because I think it's really important that you understand the difference between the grounding and bonding. Um, I know when I teach code, that section 10 for in the Canadian electrical code can be really trippy to my students. So it seems like that and volt drop really kind of trip people out. So I'll be definitely doing something on grounding and bonding. And then my man, Dan Lack asked for something on harmonics and got a couple shout outs with that as well. So I'm definitely gonna be doing one on harmonics as well. Cause I find them fascinating. And especially with the amount of electronic equipment that we have these days, electronics uh, causes a lot of issues with harmonics. And I've seen situations where our plant, I was at a plant up north, it kept shutting down. The computer system kept shutting down. The power supply couldn't handle all the harmonics in the system, so we had to put a filter in. So I'll be talking about that. Also, Cam, if you're watching, I, uh, I'm definitely working on something on phase converters. And if you go back to the, to the Facebook page there, you'll see that Cam and I had a discussion about phase converters versus drives. And there's a lot of there's similarities and differences and all that fun stuff. So I posted an article on that because I was doing a little research for myself. So if you want to find out the difference between a roto phase converter, which basically takes single phase and turns it into three phase, or a drive, which can also do the same thing, why would you need one over the other? There's an article there that goes over that. So on to the troubleshooting tips of the day. Now there's going to be, obviously I can't, I'm not going to go into huge troubleshooting, like how to troubleshoot a VFD or how to troubleshoot motor control circuit. This is a broad overview. And this is something I teach to my class and my students is kind of the steps that I take and things that you need to think about, especially if you're going from construction into service work, it might not be something that you would be so intuitive. I know for some of you guys watching this, it's just like, it's going to be so basic for you, but for others, there's going to be things that you never even thought about. So that's just take that into consideration. And uh, if you have anything that you want to add to this, by all means, jump in there into the comments below and just type it up. I know most of you probably will not be watching this live, but if you are watching it live, just hop in there and throw it in there. If you're not watching it live, just throw it in the comments as well. I get those comments, get notifications that you commented. I try to reply to all the comments anyways, and people read through those. So if you have something that you can add to the conversation, please, by all means, do so. That's what I like about these Facebook live shows. It's not just about me, it's about you guys. I'm here to just facilitate the conversation is the way I'm feeling and I'm loving it. So anyways, here we go. Number one, when you are troubleshooting, the first thing you want to do, well, I've got a list here and I'm gonna change my order here, is number one is gonna be ask lots of questions. When you get to the site, ask what happened, what's not working, what were the circumstances that surrounded it? Did anything weird happen before or anything weird happen after? There's been so many situations where you find out that things are not, do, they didn't work because they weren't supposed to work. And I've run into this into industrial sites a lot 
where we talked about sequence control or you want to find out if a VFD has got some sort of interlock built into it. Well, they want the these guys try to jump it out and try to get the VFD to work and they don't realize that there is some sort of soft interlock in the program. So it's not supposed to work. So there's that. Number two, use your eyes and nose. And I have, tr this is definitely, especially with residential, you want to sniff it out because there's lots of issues where you things are starting to burn a bit. You know what I'm talking about. When the insulation starts to burn, it starts to smell. Or if you go to a commercial or industrial site and the motor starts to cook a bit, you know that those windings are going to start stinking a little bit. So kind of suss it out. Watch for kind of burn marks. I've gone to one house where there was a burn mark in the wall right before a switch. And then I found out later what had happened, and they didn't tell me this until much later, that they had taken an air conditioner and they had plugged it into a... Um, a wall socket that was controlled by a switch, you know, in the bedrooms, because that's what it was. But the air conditioner was too cold. So this guy thought he would be a genius, went down to Home Depot and bought himself a dimmer. He installed the dimmer where the switch used to be and figured that he could control the coldness of the air conditioner with the dimmer. It ended up frying all the wire in the wall because it just couldn't handle the load. It, was, it did, wreaked havoc on it. And there along the wall, and I kid you not, was a line, a burn line that went across the wall and up to the switch. So that was awesome, but obviously that was an issue. So he had it all unplugged and had the dimmer switch there. Didn't tell me that they had air conditioner in, and I thought it was really strange that he had a dimmer for a switched receptacle. So then when we dug into it, he finally fessed up. So that was something. Um, number three, don't just trust anyone like when you walk in and i've run into this with um with everybody with residential commercial and industrial test out the circuit like get there and it might be one of those intermittent problems like last year if some of you guys remember i went to a call out where they said that if somebody turned on the light upstairs that the fan in the downstairs bedroom would suddenly turn on and then if they turned off the light the fan in the bedroom then the lights would flicker on and off and just pulse in the living room well, I went there, I looked at it, I tried to re -go do everything else that that whole situation ran through, and I could not get those lights to pulse, I could not get that fan to turn on or off. Tried it, tried it, tried it, and then at, finally at the end, I found out that they were running, a, these air conditioners, ran an air conditioner, and told me that that only happened when the air conditioner was running. Again, I went there, I looked, I tried it with the air conditioner, it still didn't work. So, you gotta trust yourself, and not necessarily everybody else, because it can cause problems. Um, you want to go in there also, <laughs> when I've gone to industrial sites, sometimes the operators aren't so trustworthy because sometimes they don't want to be working and so they will make up faults or they will cause situations to cause issues. So they will run into situations where they will claim that a machine's not working and I've gotten there and I've almost torn the whole thing apart to find out that it there's nothing wrong with it in the first place. So my advice to you, is go and test out the circuit first. Make sure that you have watched it not work. There's Don't just start tearing things apart. Juan, hey, it's good to see you, buddy. Um, definitely you wanna make sure that you see it not working before you start tearing things apart because you don't wanna get yourself into trouble where you're ripping things apart only to find out there was nothing wrong. And there's the old joke where did you turn it on and turn it off again? I have run into that so many times with so many issues where suddenly you just give it the old hard reboot and it fires right up. So that's something to consider. Don't trust anyone, only trust yourself, test it out. Next up, ask yourself or ask the operator, what is this piece of device supposed to be doing? And this goes back to what I was talking about before. I've run into the situation so often where there's been a drive situation or a PLC where there's been a soft interlock in the program and so these people figure that they want to run something and they can't make it run in manual because it's being held out by the interlock. So you got to find out what it does and what it's supposed to do. And so that involves asking lots of questions and talking to the operators. And another thing, do not be condescending. That's a huge issue. Don't talk down to these guys. They are the ones that are operating the machines. They can be your biggest ally. Another situation is make sure that the problem is localized within the area. Now, what I mean by that is two years ago, I was doing some work at a guy's house. I was rewiring his kitchen for him, and he called me up about two weeks later, and he said the weirdest thing that half the lights in his house wouldn't turn on or off, 
hey gene welcome it's good to see you man half lights wouldn't turn on or off and then uh he said that he could get the stove to work but the oven wasn't heating up properly i think you guys probably know what was wrong there was a neutral problem but i was like 45 minutes away it was midnight when he called me so i kind of was thinking about it. i thought that's really weird that his neutral would suddenly go out so what i did was i asked him to go outside and go over to his neighbor who's his best friend knock on the door and find out if he was having issues and lo and behold what ended up happening is it was a hydro it was a utility issue the utility neutral went out and so everybody's issue went out so i saved myself a long drive so I, just to get out there to find out that it wasn't going to be anything I could do anyways. And then uh, Mario ended up calling me back the next day and said that Hydro had come out, they fixed it, and there's no problem. So make sure that the problem is localized. Let's see here. I've got use your eyes, use your nose. Perhaps it's a utility issue. Don't trust anyone. Test it out. What's it supposed to do? Here's a good one. Uh, read the fine print. <laughs> if you're working on a piece of equipment, make sure you can get your hands on the manual. It is easier than it has ever been to do that. Uh, back in my day when I was out in the oil sands, we didn't have smartphones. We would go to these plants and you'd have to dig up the manuals because you want to see what the thing's supposed to do and how to troubleshoot it. And oftentimes they'll have a troubleshooting section in the manual. Nowadays, man, you just pull out your smartphone. The biggest issue you're going to get is whether you're going to use your data or get on their Wi-Fi. So go to the manual and find out what it's supposed to do. Another thing is don't overcomplicate things. I worked with one guy who would go and he would basically tear everything apart before he even got into it. And just like he would assume the worst. Oftentimes it could just be a breaker being tripped. Even if a breaker doesn't look like it's tripped, just reset the breaker makes a difference. Those are the sort of things you want to look into. I always, when I troubleshoot, is I always assume the best first. And so I attack things like the breakers or I go into boxes like easy to get to receptacles. I kind of go and figure out where the circuit runs from. So I start at the break and work my way out. Some people like to work at the end of the circuit and work their way back. Either or, it's kind of an issue where you just have to pick what works for you. Now, one thing I do with um, lighting circuits or big long circuits that aren't working that are tripping is the old divide and conquer method where you split the circuit in half. So you know where the circuit is, you know what's receptacles or what lights or fans or whatever, depending on what you're working on, what is working. You cut that circuit in half, so you open up one of the fans and you jump out half of them. Like you have half of them not connected and the, another half connected, the half that's closest to the breaker. You turn it on. If it doesn't trip, then you know that your problem is upstream. So then what I do with that is I'll go to another quarter and I'll work my way up that way. Now, if it does trip, then I know it's downstream. And so then I go half of that and work my way half of that. That method, I got taught that method when I was a, an apprentice working in a greenhouse. Shout out to Tim Dewitt. He taught me that method because we were installing a bunch of lights along a pathway. And these are like 30 acre greenhouses. And we always run into issues with lighting. So instead of trying to figure out opening up every single light, he's like, no, man, you just have to cut the circuit in half and then work from there. If it trips after that, then you know it's downstream. If it doesn't trip, you know the problem's upstream. It was a good, good method. Um, yeah, that's basically all I really wanted to talk about as far as the troubleshooting skills go. Now, again, it's troubleshooting is an art, and it is something that you do get better at the more you do it. I know you always want to, we all want to walk in and look like we're the wire whisperer, what do you say in there, Gene? I teach by harrowing the box, working from load to source. There you go. So Gene's working opposite of the way I work. I usually go from the source out to load, but I think there is something to be said, said in going from the load to the source. So definitely. Um, where was I going with that? I can't even remember what I was talking about now. That was just such a good comment. Um, yeah. So does anybody remember what I was talking about? Because I feel like I was on a good run there. But maybe not. I'm trying to think here. Oh, yeah, I know what I was talking about. Whether or not you, it takes time. And for those of you guys getting started or if you're an apprentice, don't think you're going to be able to figure it out right away. If you go join any of these Facebook groups, and Juan, you know what I'm talking about. There's lots and lots of people that are asking questions and lots of seasoned journey people that are out there asking tons of questions in there. We run into things all the time. So you're going to do your best to figure out what's wrong, but sometimes you can't. And there's no shame in ask. That's the biggest point. But yeah, there it is. There's no shame in asking for help. Whether it is through a Facebook group, 
that your journeyman, your boss, anybody, you are going to run into situations that you cannot solve. I don't care what, how wonderful this person is or what kind of wonder wire whisperer they are. Everybody runs into an issue that they're not going to be able to come up against, especially with electrical because electrical is so strange that way. It can do some funny, funny things. Eh? Like with harmonics, you get issues. With LED lighting now, everybody's seeing the disco vibe going on, right? You see that those situations where sometimes if you have two three-way switches on dimmers, which you can't do on an LED or a CFL, you start getting that pulsing. You get the disco effect going on. And I've seen that show up on lots and lots of Facebook feeds where um, – there's lots of like high bay LED high bay lighting doing that, and nobody's been able to figure it out. I think it's come down to a loose neutral at some point. But anyways, there's lots there's lots of problems. Which, if you're thinking about it, that's one of the things I love the most about the trade is it's always changing. There's always a challenge. So part of the fun of it, of the troubleshooting is trying to come up against those issues, where you just run into issues that you can't come up against that you've never run into before. And Gene's saying there's no such thing as a dumb question in this profession. And I cannot agree more with that. The only dumb question I think Gene would agree is the one not asked. Right. And I say this to my students all the time too, for you guys who are students and in class and Gene's is an instructor, just like me. If we find that if you have a student, if you have a question and you feel dumb asking it, but you go ahead and you take the step and you ask it anyways, you will find that there is other guys out there that are thinking the same thing. So just ask the question. And same thing as an apprentice, if you're out there and you're coming up across something that you're troubleshooting against and you can't figure it out, ask the question. If you're a journeyman and you've been on the tools for 30 years, you own your own company, you've been a project manager and you've come up against something that you cannot figure out, ask the question. So all the troubleshooting tips are great, but the number one thing is ask for help. For sure. And that's what I love about the way that the world's working these days. I know we hear a lot of crap about social media and how it's ruining everything. I can see that. I can I see the point in that. But I also see Facebook groups and all these other like Instagram groups and even Snapchats and all that. People using social media for good and using it as a method to teach. Juan and I were just talking the other day about how there's this group, this training group for electricians on Facebook. And I got on that group and man, it was blowing my mind, the stuff that people put in there. It's, it's exciting to be on the part of these things. So get yourself out there, join some Facebook groups. I'm not saying join the Electric Academy one. I mean, you're already, obviously you do because you're here, but there are so many good ones out there. Industrial Electrician's Break Room is a good one. Electrical tri electrical Tips, Trips, yeah, it's hard for me to say. Electrical Tips, Tricks and Hacks is a good one. Uh, Dave Ballantine and um, Dan Haruk often moderate those ones. Um, you have, you have some make fun of saying it, but how many times is it a loose neutral? Uh, I probably come in across a loose neutral, not as often as some guys claim that they have. I know some guys claim that they run into this loose neutral all the time. I've only seen it like once or twice, to be honest with you. I've come across it where like the neutral has become disconnected or the identified conductor has become disconnected and you get that funky weird voltage at another plug downstream of it. But um, anyways, Tim Greer was asking about how many times have I run into that. So there's that. Um, let's see. Yeah, you do. And learn something new every day. That's another good point. Use these groups. I know we, I can, so you get hooked up into that Facebook feed, right? Where you just start scrolling and scrolling. Next thing you know, you've wasted an hour going through things. Well, may, if you're going to be doing that, get into those Facebook groups. I know what I was talking about. Just different groups that I belong to. Industrial Electricians Break Room was one. Electrical Tips, Trips, and Hacks were one. Um, if you guys know of any other electrical, there's electricians apprentice help. That's another really good one. Apprentices ask lots of questions in there. And if you're out there and you're watching this and people are asking for help, and this is another thing that drives me nuts. And you guys who are instructors or actively involved in these groups know it drives me nuts when people start ragging and trolling on people. Don't do that because it just, it ruins the vibe of the groups and we're all there to learn anyways. So let's keep that in mind, right? Let's just keep the good vibes going and keep learning from each other. So that's, I mean, that's the passion of the Electric Academy. And that's why I'm into this. And I've been doing this for like three years now is because I teach electrical. For those of you who don't know, I teach a foundation course, so an entry level course and a second year apprenticeship course. And I just found that there's so much out there that we can teach and teach it in a way that's exciting. So that's kind of what I'm uh, talking about there. So that's why I like to do this stuff. So I, that's why I'm hopping on to the Facebook lives all the time. Um, 
couple more things. There is make sure. Oh yeah, before I go off here. Oh, I'm at 20 minutes. That just flew by. Um, if you have not downloaded that PDF, I've changed the PDF of online resources. So if you go to the Learn More button on the Electric Academy, the Electric Academy Facebook page, there, there's that Learn More button, or it talks about this downloadable PDF. I've changed it and I've updated it because there's a couple that I've added and a couple I took out. I want to give a huge shout out right now to John Workman at the Electrician's Library. He's doing some crazy good stuff. If you're into podcasts, you best be listening to stuff electricians should know. He does an awesome job of it. It's like they're quick five, 10 minute podcasts, but he covers awesome topics. He is also working on an app that should hopefully be out in June called Cody. And it's just, it's one of those bot apps where you can just, and by bot, I mean BOT, like a little robotic app where you can ask it questions, any question about the NEC code, and it will give you an answer. And so he's like building the database up. It's been taking him an extra long time, but it is so going to be awesome. He's, I've seen kind of the prototype version of it working and it's mind blowing. So check that out at electricianslibrary.com. Or if you go to the electricians library, Facebook group, he's got versions of that as well. He, his, his is also, there's a newsletter that he puts out once, I think it's twice a week and it's worth checking out because he offers a lot of good information. Just like me, he doesn't like to get all wordy and stuff. He just kind of gives you the quick information, tells you about his podcast and what's coming up. Uh, I know I mentioned at the beginning, I put out an ebook. Let me just show you guys what I'm talking about here. This ebook, let me just go down here and go to, where's my, I can't find it now. There it is, preview. So what I did, that is not what I'm looking for. Let's open that up. Here it is. As uh, I wrote up, a book on electrical, basic electrical, basic electricity from the Electric Academy. And it goes through basically Ohm's law, Watt's law, meter safety, what is electricity, how is it generated, Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws, electrical safety, all that fun stuff. So it is out there for consumption if you guys want it. Not only have I done that, it's about a 40 page ebook, is I also have put together a, let's see here, workbook to go along with it some worksheets so where you guys can ha work on some stuff practice your most of this is dc analysis but if you're working on watts law ohm's law that sort of stuff there it's all out there it's 10 bucks if you want a copy of it just hit me up i'll send you the link to it i'm having issues with um the link that i've got so i'm just going to try to just call this up again i'm trying to fix that but if you want a copy let me know and i'll get you going in the right direction on that one all right, next week, I'm going to be talking about grounding versus bonding. And like I said, I'm going to work on a little PowerPoint about that. Make sure if you're watching this after that you're adding your ideas of troubleshooting in the comments below. I want to see that going out there. And um, yeah, thanks, Gene. Gene says, you have a passion to teach. Good information, Chad. Nobody can take this away from me. I will be dragged kicking and screaming from my profession of teaching. I... And it's beyond passionate. It's like my life's goal. I love my family and I love teaching. So, and anybody who's been a student of mine understands that. So anyways, you guys have a great week. Let me know if you need anything else. Keep the questions and comments coming in. I checked, I'm on that Facebook group and Facebook page all the time. I want to hear your comments. I want to hear what you guys want talked about because uh, electrical doesn't, electrical theory doesn't need to be hard. It just needs to be broken down into simple steps. All right. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend. It's a long weekend and you stay safe and you have a uh, fun time with your family and you have a great Easter. All right. Have a great Easter, everyone. And from me to you, love you guys. Later.